A few weeks ago, Bo and I headed to Poland to visit Panzer Farm, and what we were treated to was nothing short of mind blowing. <laughs> Got everything we need. <laughs> They've been manufacturing parts and restoring vehicles for their upcoming museum, but they also take on projects from clients who send in their items in vehicles for restoration. This week, our journey continues into Panzer Farm as we head deeper into this incredible organisation and meet some of the faces behind these breathtaking historic projects. Dzień dobry, nazywam się Kurt from Oz Armor. Witam w Workshop Wednesday. <laughs> After this unexpected test drive, our host Michael took us to one of the workshops to have a look at the progress on one of the finishing touches of the JS2's 122mm gun. Here is the Josef Stalin gun mounting. Now Ludek, our welder, big experienced guy because he was uh, welding bridges in Siberia. And now he is making replica of the gun shield for Josef Stalin, now welding it together. That's the shield that uh, secures the operator of the gun. Bronek makes the parts from the fin plates and sometimes from thicker plates. These things, for example, it seems at first look, it seems like old or yeah. Okay. That's for the Josef Stalin um, machine gun mounting. Uh -huh. This is the original one. This is the replica which was made from old plate and was hammered to, to make it like original looking. This, these ones are fabricated in comparison to the original pieces here. Eh? This is the 12 ton hard truck. We restored the body for our friend from Germany. Most of the parts are original. The front is uh, completely new made, but the fenders we try to use as original uh, things from this body as we can. So someone made the replica, someone made some repair on this body, but some things were uh, like not properly made, for example, these sides were straight. Now Bronek uh, made oh. it properly, changed it properly, they are curved. Very important thing is to put the body on a chassis to make it straight. Sometimes yes. after the restoration it comes and it's totally bent. In this body Bronek made it beginning to the end, from, let's say. From, I think, with, with a slight bend as well. Slight bend that uh, pressed corners. Eh? This is so impressive, wow. And actually, it's a very nice vehicle. Each row can be seated six people. Yes, on oh, so their rifles. Six, twelve. Yeah, for the rifles, you can count how many people. Six, six, or so twelve people. And in front, I think five or four people. You put the wooden shelves uh, with all the tools. This vehicle actually was, as I know, it was mostly for artillery. Eh? It was right. towing big gun, had wow. big, big wings on it. Uh, actually, the one size bigger bigger vehicle, three of them could tow Tiger, even Tiger. Eh? In we go. The passion for restorations doesn't stop when the work is over. Even in their spare time, guys like Martin are able to work on their own projects. Martin is a specialist in the uh, motorcycles. He is also a big, big enthusiast about it. So in the free time, he and his friends here are working on restoration. So the, the very early, very early M72 from 1944, you can see yeah, how, how it will look. This one. Finally, this one. yeah. The, the funny thing is that previously these motorcycles were everywhere, but now to complete the original Second World War motorcycle, it's like very, very difficult. Many of them were modified and so on. So these, these things are getting much, much rarer and more difficult to yeah. find. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Oh, wow. There's two of them. Now we are starting Steyr. Uh, you know this tire also, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, Al. Al knows this one. So the air cooled engine. Mm. But you know, yeah, you know this stuff. I mean, you have the museum. Where okay. did you find these? Yeah, so these, are, these come from Germany. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. It was not so bad condition. Yeah, the body is, uh, the, the rear part is new made, but the front we try to use as much 
as much as, as we can of the original. We have the gearbox, which is in original paint, yeah, so some things like even a completely new painted car have some yeah, or original accents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gosh. <laughs> wow. Now for something really special. This is, this is the Tiger engine. Yes. So this engine was very, very good condition. Complete engine, never in the water, only staying a long time outside in the tank. Actually, this, this one is uh, from the French Museum. That's interesting engine because the oil pan is flat, but the crankshaft goes into the tunnel. Yes. Instead of the casted camshaft bearings, you have the roller bearing. Quite complicated to assemble it. You put the engine vertically yes. and you put the shaft, uh, the crankshaft from the, like, from the top. Yeah. Originally, it was 90 liters engine. Finally, they made 23 liters from it, 700 horsepower. And this engine is very delicate. It's, uh, it don't like overheating because you can see that it's the space between the cylinders is even cut through. They are so close to each together. It's about, I think, two or three millimeters between the cylinders. Oh, wow. It, this engine had to be used by the experienced soldiers, experienced drivers, and we know that the, the, the end of the war, <laughs> the drivers were 16 or 18 years old, yeah. just going from the school and uh, to the front. So probably that was the biggest problem. It's known that the Tiger's engines and Panther engines were not bad, of course, they are oversized. So, so normally, this engine as a 90 liter engine will be perfect uh, for all conditions. Yeah? This one has to be used with, re with care. a lot of things, with, yeah. with, with care. Yeah. Mm. That looks like not, not the engine from the tank, it looks like the engine from the sports car. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's the thing. Yeah? You have to think about the cooling fluid. If, if the coo cooling fluid goes out, it will die in a moment. Yeah. We're getting here, bro. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. So here, here works stomach. The manager of our workshop, Tom, is the main guy that is working on engines. Experience even in HL two hundred thirty. So like, I think the one of the top engines. Yeah, you could you could repair. Yeah? HL forty two. You can see the description even here. The engine number ninety forty two HL forty two. And on the casting, to identify it in the factory, even yeah? here you can see after the first step, which is disassembly, you can see how the oil pan looks. If in old oil there are some dirt, if there are some metal pieces from the bearings or the housing. Here you can see it was staying long time in one place. The water came also uh, into the engine. Corrosion was making the holes in the shaft. So this shaft will go to for machining shop. So it's, it will be still usable. Of course, they will check if it doesn't have the cracks because the cracks can be seen like at first glance. Here also at first inspection, you can tell if the bearings are okay or not. Here you can see big scratches. These bearings are casted ones. So you have to machine the working surface and then cast pushing material, uh, then machining, final machining of the whole block. In line, everything has to be in line. Eh? So here on the other side, you can see, on the other side, there are cylinder sleeves. Whoa, the, this is, <laughs> the one is really used. So you have to take out the, the cylinder sleeves. We order it from the specialist companies. All of them are bad. I, I don't inspect the engines very often, but uh, you can see the difference between the nominal size, which is here where the piston is not working, and the place, the surface where the piston was working. Here is half millimeter difference in, in the diameter, yeah? maybe even more. Yeah? yeah, I see. That's scratch, but that's one thing. But here you can see like the step, we call it step. 
here you, you can feel that the piston rings scratch the surface. We will need to take out the, the cylinder sleeves and make new. All these original pistons will be machined in this special way. So they will make to, to the sizes they get from the machining of this piston. They will measure the dimensions of the uh, piston rings, which we see here. And then at the end, they will make the cylinder sleeves, which will fit exactly to this piston. Clutch surface, mm -hmm. you can easily see someone was not, not using it properly and it got so much heat that it overheated. Everything here, here this, uh, this blue, blue color is the it's overheated. Like yeah, wow. it's overheated metal. So now you have to grind it. When you grind this surface from the flywheel, then you will need to grind this one and we just mm. make a little bit thicker clutch disc. Here is the restored 250 gearbox, so where we can find some original paint, we try to leave it. Now the original paint is something that people take care of and, and like like to leave. Yeah? This, this gearbox actually was like perfect condition, oil inside, uh, so it was more like cleaning, changing the bearings, no big work. Maybach HL120, so Stug, Panzer IV, and here you can see the difference between the wall between the cylinders. Yeah. So this engine is uh, for, for gives more mistakes. New cylinder sleeves, new timing gears. Uh, some of them are originally uh, made of bakelite, but some of them are just the steel steel gears. So we make them new. They have to be precise. Better not to use the too much rusted. And this one it has also the roller bearings on the crankshaft, but it's it's not like the tunnel shaft. It's yeah. divided the, in two pieces. So you close the crankshaft with the oil pan, which is also the the housing for the bearings at the same time. Yeah? So much easier to disassemble to to work on this engine in comparison to the to the Tiger engine. Oh, yeah? uh, that looks familiar. Yeah, and also <laughs> this this was the pattern for the for oh. the gears, for the gears uh, you you got from us, yeah. Yes. So now now needs to we need to reass reassemble uh, <laughs> it yeah. for us, but but it was it was the pattern for making the documentation on it. Okay. This is the, the other Tiger engine, the, the, one, the, the one from the King Tiger. This one is more advanced in the restoration process. This engine was much more rusted than the one from France. And the problem we had was this plate under the carburetors has the auto adjuster for the engine speed. And it was totally rusted. So now we have pattern to rebuild the plate for this engine wow. also. Yeah? It was staying for a long time. But now it will be possible to finish both these engines. Yeah. So here you can see that this engine was so rusted that it had the, uh, it has completely new pistons made by Male factory. So the, the factory which is specializes in pistons and new cylinder sleeves. The final finish of the cylinder sleeves, it makes small scratches which are crossed. In these small scratches, the oil is going inside mm -hmm. and it's making what's called the oil film. Yeah, right, so the, right, right. It's still oil. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> now we have the missing parts, uh, so quite soon we should go back to work on this engine. This is the set. Yeah. This is the new new piston and new cylinder slip. Small scratches cross to each other. Connecting rods also after rebuilding. Not so big deal to make them new in whole restoration, but then it will extend the motor light. And the engine heads for the 2 230, which are also waiting to be mounted on this engine. This plate inside was totally rusted, so we were waiting for the pattern of the parts to make new ones for the inside of this plate. This is the plate which is steering the engine speed. Quite also complicated system. Now we have all the patterns so we can finish it soon. Yeah? The magneto, we tried to use the original coils, but now we make new coils each time because they are, then we can rely on it. Uh, 
before sometimes it was after heating of engine mm. it was yeah. it stopped it was stopping wor working okay? yeah we are looking for the people for to work so <laughs> oh really so gi gi uh, send us some some people from maybe from australia yeah, yeah. People from australia. <laughs> i'm sure after this there'll be lots of people wanting to work yeah <laughs> send applications to uh to michael yeah into yet another workshop where master turner marrick is making parts using shop drawings that panzer farm have produced also from time to time we're actually machining the castings yeah. uh, for example that's the idler wheel panzer for idler wheel cup yeah. p34 uh, linkage uh, for steering linkage joseph stalin gun mount gun mounting shafts for the carburetors the solex carburetors for my back engine that's the housings which hold the tiger brake system uh, yeah, yeah, the so that's for the uh, half track, uh, for 12 ton half track as the KFZ8. Mm. We make the the small things. That's the like the door door uh, door lockers. Some of the parts what Marek makes here, he makes from the pattern. Yeah, he get the pattern from yes. from the guys. Mm. I need. I have one, I need the other one, and yeah. he makes just to use for the restoration. Eh? A few steps away, and bam, Schwimmwagen, fully restored, as if out of a factory. Uh, Beautiful. Schwimmwagen, fully original. Does it uh, float? Yeah, have you haven't, <laughs> haven't tried, but <laughs> should. Eh? Another Tiger part oh, more uh, to replicate and also to, to restore. Like that, for example, that's the tu turret traversing yes. yeah, uh, gauge. It's made of for, from plastic. We have to still think how to how to ma uh, how to make the replica. I yeah? repair yeah. this one and and make new ones. So probably printing printing wow. of the just the just the plastic. Uh, we can make we can repair the parts for 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 them, but we have also perfect pattern yeah so we can yes. just have it in hand make the 3d scan design and and make the make the replica yeah? you know it's going to be perfect then. Yeah. yeah so it perfect. was we haven't even dreamed about this before now it's it it became true we can <laughs> have we, we we don't need to look in in the photos we can have it in hand and see how it's how 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 it looks measure it exactly yeah? and here are some tiger parts that are original housings from the gearbox we restore for for uh, French Museum. The new shafts, uh, the brake system, the new trucks, replica trucks, uh, also casted in Poland, and many different, many different like parts and cutting Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice this one here. I'm just. <laughs> That, that are the original patterns for the hydraulic gearbox for the traversing mechanism, yeah, for the tiger. So that are the patterns we need to now, we had third one which we already already disassembled, but one part is broken so we need to take from this one right. and see to, uh, see how it's designed. See if they match. Oh, track pins. Yeah, but track pins, which which are which have which even have the marks. I'm not sure. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, the original factory code KV <laughs> KVU. Uh, so we we pay attention to the details, yeah. eh? so we want to make as accurate replicas as we as we can. But what does all this mean for us at Oz Armor? These guys have access to the rarest, most complicated parts for World War II vehicles, but how can that help us get our own projects running? Say for example, our Tiger One. Well, tune in next Wednesday to find out about our collaboration with Panzer Farm and get a real glimpse into how they're able to perfectly replicate original parts. But that's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armor, and I'll see you on the next one.